Hello once again, and we will begin our look at Edward Manet. Edward Manet is a seminal figure in modern art. He kind of uh, is very much the transition between kind of uh, the old guard and the new guard, if you will, in a lot of people's thinking. Uh, he's a realist, but a lot of the, the, the techniques and a lot of what he's doing uh, kind of lend forward to the Impressionist, and that's really uh, his importance. He comes from a uh, very affluent background. His father was a lawyer. And uh, he was supposed to kind of follow along in his father's footsteps, but uh, didn't do that. We also know he was very well traveled. He went to Northern Europe. He also went as far as Rio de Janeiro uh, in the earlier part of his life. So he has a, a, a good exposure uh, to the art uh, uh, of, of Europe. Uh, just to look at the, the events around this time, again, we have 1852, uh, this is the, the, the rise of Napoleon III. Uh, in 1863, we have the Salon de Refuse. Uh, this is, of course, the, the famous show where we really do see Manet kind of get his bigger start in the public eye. Uh, then we have the Franco-Prussian War uh, all the way through. And again, 1874 is the first Impressionist exhibition. This is an important date uh, to kind of remember in the connection of all of these things. Uh, Manet himself was very good friends with most of the Impressionists, but did not show uh, in the Impressionist exhibition. Uh, he very much was more in favor of, of working with the Salon. Uh, and as I mentioned, the first time that we really see the big uh, public splash, if you will, from Manet uh, is when we have the Salon of the Refused Works uh, made by Napoleon III. And this is this famous uh, show that he had where, where the works that were refused to the Salon actually were all shown together. There were so many works that were refused that year uh, that Napoleon III started his own show, or uh, started a show just based on the refused works. And of course, this is where uh, we see Manet's very, very famous Luncheon on the Grass, uh, first kind of being shown in the public view uh, and, and having its first major impact on uh, uh, the critics, etc. And this is, of course, that very famous painting, Luncheon on the Grass. Uh, and again, when we think about this, this was intended for the Salon. Uh, this is a painting that uh, was controversial for its time, not only for the subject matter, the frankness of the subject matter, but also how it was actually depicted. The painting style uh, has this kind of loose slapdash type of style to it that we'll associate uh, with Manet. But again, uh, this is a style that kind of carries forward uh, into the next generation of artists, the Impressionist. And when I say that slapdash style, uh, what I mean is when you look at it, you can physically see the brush strokes uh, rather than kind of a finished look that the salon is more used to seeing. Uh, so from 1859, we have The Absinthe Drinker, and this is, uh, again, when we look at the early work by Manet, uh, he is influenced by Gustave Courbet. Again, what he's doing is he's really projecting what we think of as the lower class or the, the refuse of the world. And again, the absinthe drinker, uh, this was a rag picker from the local area. A rag picker is a person uh, very much like today. If you think of a person who goes through the garbage and, and kind of pulls out the aluminum cans, this is kind of what a rag picker did uh, even back then. They were very, very famous, of course, for going through the, the garbage and kind of pulling out the finer things uh, uh, and then reselling them. So this is kind of the vantage point of, of, of we see from uh, uh, Manet. One of the more famous pieces we have early on, uh, and this is actually a copy that you can see at the Dallas Museum of Art, is the Spanish singer or the Spanish musician. Uh, this is a painting that we will see accepted to the Salon uh, very, very early on. This is actually before luncheon uh, on the grass. And again, this is kind of uh, uh, still from this kind of more rural type of, of perspective on art. Uh, uh, again, when we look at Manet, he kind of has a love for uh, Spanish culture, which we kind of see uh, emanating again and again within his work. 
here we have the actual painting uh, and as it says this was actually shown uh, in the salon in 1861 it was put in a a more prominent place in the salon so it was actually seen by a few people but again uh, the style by which he's painting was causing him problems even uh, early on this kind of roughness that he uh, 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 the way he was painting uh, uh, was really the problem not so much the subject matter again uh, when we think of this this kind of contemporary notion uh, a lot of this has already been kind of laid out by Gustave Courbet this kind of showing the modern world uh, showing aspects of modern life well uh, if you think of it as uh, uh, essentially we have Courbet showing the countryside uh, Manet maybe showing a little bit more of what's occurring within the city uh, the Old Musician from 1862, uh, if I remember this story correctly, this is actually uh, an older gypsy leader that kind of lived on the outskirts of Paris, uh, uh, and this is somebody that Manet was familiar with and kind of constructed this composition around him. Uh, we notice, of course, that the rag picker, our, our, our absinthe drinker, if you will, has returned to the composition. But again, uh, when we look at this, we can kind of see the style that I was talking about. Uh, we have these very well-defined figures and very realistic approximations of their faces, but as we move farther and farther out, what we see is kind of this rougher uh, way of actually representing the canvas. Here's a comparison with the absence drinker, and you can see uh, how very, very close uh, the, this background person actually is to this painting that he did earlier. Again, this isn't that unusual. Uh, we see a lot of artists kind of repeating earlier compositions within later compositions, uh, especially early on. Uh, again, we need to remember that most of these artists are working off of models, so uh, it's not always 100% practical to get a new model uh, depending on the financial situation. So not so incredibly unusual but again uh, when we look at this and we look at the people that he's representing within the painting uh, again it is kind of this lower class that we're talking about here we see one of the first images of Victorine Meron. Uh, Victorine will be the, the very, very famous uh, uh, model for a lot of uh, Manet's artwork during this period of time. She is, of course, the woman that we see in Luncheon on the Grass, and this also the woman that we will later see in Olympia. Uh, when we look at this painting again, she's in the guise of a matador. And uh, again, this continuation of Manet's love of Spanish culture. But if you look at how she's kind of placed within this, it's a very kind of peculiar painting. Again, she seems like uh, uh, she's almost standing in front of a, a, a painting rather than fully integrated uh, with the background. Again, uh, as I mentioned, Victorine actually is uh, the, the person that we see featured uh, in Luncheon on the Grass, the woman in the foreground without her clothes on. Uh, again, Victorine is a very interesting person by her own right. Uh, we, we hear and we focus on all of these kind of male bohemian artists uh, from this time, uh, but Victorine would be a good example, I think, of a, the female version of this type of personality. Uh, uh, she was a, a local musician who played at a lot of the cafes, uh, and again, she was, of course, a model for Manet, uh, and she was an artist by her own right as well. So again, when we think about uh, all of these different aspects of her life, uh, she's a very interesting person to kind of look up and research. Uh, here we have one of the first paintings by Manet, uh, and I imagine, I've, I always imagine that this may be how, how uh, he first met her uh, as he was going into a cafe and she was kind of leaving the cafe, uh, the, the street singer, and we can see this uh, in the guise of what she would actually have been doing, which is probably playing music uh, at the cafe. Here we can see her uh, uh, chewing on some fruit in addition to uh, uh, holding a musical instrument and you can make your own uh, connotations of course about her eating that fruit and the bright red colors uh, etc. Uh, she was actually known as the shrimp and, and uh, the reason was because of her height uh, and also she has this very very uh, reddish type of hair. Uh, as I mentioned, she was a painter by her own right, and she was uh, very successful for a female painter uh, from this difficult time period to be a female artist. Uh, she was accepted in the Salon of 1876, 79, 1885 and also 1904. Uh, here we just have one example of a, a painting by her and we can see kind of 
this influence of Manet a little bit, this uh, aspects of reality, but also kind of blending off into more of the brush strokes and more of what we would think of as uh, a painterly background, if you will. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, again, uh, when we look at Luncheon on the Grass, she is the kind of the key figure and, and she's one of the more interesting aspects of the painting because again, when we look at all of the other figures, uh, they're conversing with each other, but she really is uh, looking straight at us. It's as if we've, we've wandered into this scene uh, and she's almost looking at us as we're wandering through these trees. Uh, Luncheon on the Grass is really this, this seminal point in the career of Manet, uh, and it caused a tremendous amount of controversy, of course. Uh, when we look at this, the figure, as I mentioned in the foreground, is Victorine. The woman in the background is actually his wife. Uh, I believe that the woman behind Victor, or the man behind Victorine will be his future brother-in-law, and then the, the man to the immediate right there, uh, is his brother. Uh, I might have those two gentlemen mixed up, but again, uh, uh, those are kind of their placement uh, in terms of their connection with Manet. Uh, as I mentioned before, Manet is a very uh, astute person in terms of art history. He's very well studied. In fact, a lot of his compositions, as I mentioned, are kind of just updates of classical compositions. Uh, we have this classical print uh, based off of uh, the Raphael Judgment of Paris. And if we look in the bottom right corner, uh, we, of course, very famously see almost the exact scene uh, that we have from Luncheon on the Grass. Uh, what we really have from this is Manet going through and essentially changing the characters out and making them into modern adaptations uh, of what you would see around Paris rather than this mythological study. Uh, but again, when we look at this, this really is just kind of a modern update of a very, very classical composition. Uh, and, and I think that that point was actually lost on a tremendous amount of the people uh, who viewed it for the first time. Again, not everyone uh, would have this kind of reference so readily uh, placed in front of them. In addition to the fact uh, of, of kind of the frankness of the subject matter, again, we need to realize that she's a prostitute, uh, and that's kind of what's occurring here. This is this luncheon where these gentlemen are having a nice uh, a time, and of course, uh, they have a, a prostitute, and we have a woman in the background bathing, who we could also maybe think of as a prostitute as well. Uh, we also have the pastoral concert by Titian. This is thought to have uh, a, a relationship to luncheon on the grass as well. Uh, we do know when we look at paintings like Olympia, uh, which we will look at in the next segment, uh, that this is actually a, a direct reference on, uh, Titian does have a direct reference on the work of Manet. Uh, but when we look at Luncheon on the Grass, it wasn't just controversial for the subject matter. Uh, it also had to do with the fact of how it was actually constructed. Again, this slapdash painting style that we associate with Manet.